the Houston Ship Channel were to get flooded like we think it could be with a storm of about a hundred year proportion, Galveston Bay would be ruined for decades, if not permanently. We face a very serious problem here with respect to risk from a direct hit from a hurricane. And we're talking about impacting the national economy in a big way if the Houston Ship Channel goes down at all. We've got to keep the industries from being flooded. It's a huge economic engine for the region, but it's also an environmental disaster to Galveston Bay and to communities around the bay if those industries flooded and if those tanks were ruptured. Our projections show that they easily could be, and not just one, many of them could be ruptured. And so that to me is, is really the threat. The Speed Center was formed here at Rice with Rice University in the lead shortly after uh, Hurricane Katrina. We pulled together about 15 of the top researchers in the Gulf Coast area that work in and around the area of storm surge and hurricanes and land use and damage and disasters. Over the last seven years of the center, we have developed now plans and strategies for addressing a direct hit from a Hurricane Ike plus maybe even 25% increase in winds. The one that stands out is what we call the mid-bay solution. And the mid-bay solution is to put in elevation increases along the coast, uh, Galveston and Bolivar, uh, if you will, parts of uh, elements of the, of the original Ike Dyke, coastal spine. To then bring into the mid-bay, there are a couple of options where we'd have a north-south running protection levee, we would have a gate across the ship channel, sort of mid-bay, and then we would connect in and tie over to the Texas City uh, levee or dike. In that solution, you would be protecting all of the ship channel, all of the West Bay of Galveston, as well as you would protect a lot of Galveston Island and Bolivar. You would probably need to have a ring dike uh, in and around the Galveston area. None of these solutions are going to be less than two and a half billion dollars, and they could be much more costly depending on what's pursued. To get that type of commitment from a congressman or from a senator, uh, from the Congress itself, we're going to have to have a lot of public support. And so we've really been over backwards to try to find solutions that address the entire region rather than just one part of the region. And we think we're getting there now, and I think this uh, most recent report we've come out with really is a huge step forward in that regard. I wish I knew why it is that it hasn't caught fire and, and gotten more traction. And of course, uh, I'm a flood expert and I know for a fact that the time you wait since the last event, the time since the last flood is critical. So now we've waited eight years and, and memory uh, has, is slipping. Uh, I, I would hate to say that we have to wait for another direct hit or another major hit before we act, but I'm afraid that that may be the mode in which we find ourselves.